Okay, I've been boxing since I was five. I started karate at 16. Um, I was a Golden Gloves champion uh, three times and my spleen ruptured, so I really couldn't get back into boxing. So I started doing karate and I was lucky that uh, right when I got my black belt, they started the full contact. And uh, I was the national champion. Uh, I was world rated uh, in the 70s, in the middle 70s, fought for the world title in 1977, uh, fought Raw Scott and uh, I was defeated, but it, you know, it carried me on. I'd, I'd started kind of a life of the martial arts, and it, you know, it became a way of life for me. Uh, I always had a job. I worked as a police officer and then later as a prosecuting attorney, but the martial arts was always the, pretty much the way I wanted to be and the way I, you know, set myself up. Well, you've seen, I guess, uh, MMA's evolve, uh, involvement from you know the early times to what it is now. I mean, what what are the, the I guess the biggest changes you've seen? Well, it's gone from what I've seen when it started off, and I was training with uh, the Gracies before the first uh, UFC. And the one thing that Elio had set up was. What he wanted was a an art, and what he had worked so hard to have was an art where a smaller man had a legitimate chance against a larger man. And uh, you hear that all the time, but it was really a fact in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, and he wanted to prove it. And uh, his son, Horian, had come over here. Uh, at the time, Horian had... Uh, Mr. Millis, the guy who was the uh, one, one of the choreographers and uh, screenwriters for Conan the Barbarian, and he's real well known in Hollywood, uh, his son was training with Horian, and they got together uh, with Art Davey, and they came up with the idea of the uh, you know of an octagon, and the fights would go until somebody won. There was no decision, was none of that. It went as long as it took, and uh, he used the brother Hoyce to, uh, you know, that he felt like would show the effectiveness because, you know, when little skinny Hoist came walking in there, there wasn't nobody thought he was going to make it past the first round. And then when he fought the fights he did, he beat Shamrock in that, in that first one in about 60 seconds. That really raised a lot of eyebrows, you know, and Gordo was just knocking people's teeth out and then he choked Gordo out pretty quick. It, it changed the martial arts world. And then Hoist went on to, you know, win two of the next three, uh, and then pretty much the rules changed because his uh, his fight with uh, Severn, I mean, there's Hoist on the bottom for 15 minutes, and uh, they ran out of time for the pay-per-view. So in a lot of places, some places it was up to the people running the thing, whether it went on or it didn't, but in some people, lot places, they cut it off. And it raised all kind of hell. It, it start, it, at that time, it was the biggest stir up ever in pay per view, especially when people heard Hoist won, because nobody, it didn't look like he was winning, you know. And uh, I was there at ringside. I was there at the first five because Hoist and I were real close. And uh, I mean, it was it was the legitimate David versus Goliath, and David winning. So I guess uh, in, in doing this and everything, I mean, did that first inspire you to, uh, or, or put the thought in your mind anyway, to start opening, uh, you know, your school? No, not really. I'm going to tell you what did it. I was, uh, like I say, I'd been doing uh, karate for years, had been at the top, a top level, you know, uh, full contact karate fighter, world rated. Uh, I'd been a good boxer, and uh, I work as a police officer. I was in a... Uh, in the middle of a domestic dispute, and uh, I was hit from behind by a guy a lot bigger than me and a lot stronger. I was about 185, 190, he was 240. And when I hit the ground, I just about had the wind knocked out of it. Never saw the guy coming. And he's choking me down on the floor, and all my boxing and karate wasn't doing me any good. I mean, I, I couldn't budge the guy's arms, and I could feel myself, you know, start, start seeing stars and everything. And, uh, but I had got the, you know, I'd, I'd trained with, with Hori and I'd just started. And uh, I did a hip lift escape and got the guy off of it. Of course, once we hit our feet, it was all over for him. But, you know, because I knew how to fight on my feet. But after that, I mean, it was jiu-jitsu from then on. That was in 1993. What I'd been doing was trying to find people to train with me, but I wasn't really pushing it. Well, after that, people were wanting to take karate lessons. I said the only way they would 
do any karate with me was we'd do 30 minutes of karate and then 30 minutes of Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And then I just, when my knees pretty much gave out, because heck, I was in my middle 40s at the time, then I, we, started, we started doing it. And I started training, got some fighters together, and then the next thing I knew in 97, I'd been doing it for four years, I was a blue belt and all I, everybody else was white belts. I just got my blue belt no, the year before. So they had the first Gracie Nationals in 97. And we took five guys, me and four others, and every one of us won a gold medal. And we was on the map, you know, we were on the map. And right after that came the Texas Punishment Crew, the name, and we've been shooting straight up ever since.